Whew. Sorry, baby. Uh, usually I don't have that problem. Uh, it's, it's fine. Plenty of people have difficulties adding cards from their deck to their hand. Yeah, but not me. I wonder if he's back. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. The new list is out! And shockingly, there's not too much we need to test from it. Mostly, it just curbed the power of the best deck and got rid of some lingering frustrations. But there is one big purple snake that does require attention. And after we're done with that, we can check out Thunder Dragon! <laughs> So here's the list. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. I've been shilling Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck for, well, years at this point, and I'm happy to announce I have no intention of stopping anytime soon. By now, they've become the most complete repository of tournament tops on the internet, the best place to jam prog with friends, and of course, still host strategy articles. Recently, they've added a new piece of infrastructure to the fold, a three-card arena draft, draftable with card pools featuring classic formats, master duel, or within any parameters you like. Give it, or any of their other features, a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. With that, let's take care of Colossus. Thunder Dragon Colossus is one of Yu-Gi-Oh's most powerful and iconic monsters ever. The T and Toss, this big boy was one of the end bosses of an archetype invented around 2002's most powerful plus one. Well, outside of Pot of Greed. Provided a Thunder Monster had activated its effect in the hand this turn, you could tribute a Thunder Monster on field to cheat out this fusion. And then once it was on the board, it resisted destruction and prevented an opponent from adding cards from their deck to their hand at all. After years of finding this floodgate in end boards, Konami finally did what had to be done and banned it. But now it's back! Evidently, its legality and disuse in Master Duel convinced Konami the danger had passed. But I beg to differ. In its heyday, this card was found everywhere, from its associated deck, which aimed to use the repeatable Thunder Dragon line and a decent Sky Striker matchup to metagame the format, to a much more explosive and powerful combo deck, Crusadia Danger Thunder. Everyone was making this mistake. We're going to try a deck that looks a lot more like the latter, Horus, Bestial, Chaos, Thunder. By supplementing powerful playmakers from Thunder Dragon's era, Levianir, Sed 2, Brotar, and the like, with more modern monsters like Imseti, Lubellion, and Ringo Worm, we can engineer a combo deck that can set up a ton of varied, layered types of interaction and kill through almost anything on the crackback. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First up are Thunder Dragons, two copies of Roar, two copies of Dark, and one Hawk. Now this doesn't seem like a ton, but this deck draws like nobody's business. You're going to find them. This deck also doesn't have a particularly convincing normal summon, so we're going with Battery Man Solar, one of the old power cards from Thunder Dragon's heyday. After that, we've got our Horus Monsters, three copies of Imseti, and one happy, happy, happy. This is the normal ratio for people who are playing a svelte King Sarcophagus engine. We're aiming to use these two monsters to overlay into a copy of the Zombie Vampire and mill a bunch of cards from the top of our deck. In terms of cards that are good to mill, here are the Bestials. We've got the Bestial Lubellion at two copies and then a 2-1-1-1 split on the Hand Trap Bestials, doubling up on Saranir because we really want to find rebranded. After that, we've got some dangers, three copies of Nessie and one copy of Mothman, followed by our Chaos Monsters, two Levianir, one copy of Darkest Diabolos, Lord of the Lair. This seems like a strange inclusion for people who are familiar with Chaos dragons in general because it usually doesn't make the cut but in this deck when you tribute a monster to summon out colossus that will trigger the effect of the darkest diabolos uh, after that we have big said we have the chaos dragons star liege safert and ringo worm finally pulling up the rear in terms of monsters is the boy himself Brotar. After that, we've got some spells, three copies of the Melody of Awakening Dragon, three copies of Forbidden Droplet. I feel this is the most effective non-engine for the strategy. You really want pretty much your entire hand in the graveyard, so it's nice for cracking back, and it's also fine to draw, just more negation. And then the now limited Chaos Space, one copy of King Sark, and one copy of Rebranded. In the extra deck, we have one copy of Thunder Dragon Colossus, a Dispotter, a Chaos Angel, and a Psy Frame Lord Omega. You can do a similar 
silly little synchro setup as you can in new Snake Eye Pure using Omega and Dispotter, but we've actually got better stuff to do. We've got the Zombie Vampire, uh, Hope Harb, Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. This deck makes eights like nobody's business, and Photon Lord and Hope Harb help against different matchups. And we've got Heretic Dragon King of Atum as well. These bestials are all sixes. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, we've got Saruya, Skull Dread, a copy of Apollosa, Dark, SP Little Knight, Seals, Gar Dragon Pisty, and though we are not playing a copy of the Field Spell, we are still playing a Striker Dragon just because it's really got a lot of utility in terms of just a guy you can summon from the extra deck. I mean, pretty much any Link one is broken. Have you all noticed that? In the side deck, we've got three copies of Nibiru, three copies of Droll Lockbird, three Dark Ruler, three Cosmic, and three evenly matched. Gonna be honest, didn't think too much about the side when throwing this together. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Voiceless Voice, and while it certainly feels good to be going first against this strategy, and of course to have the Bestials versus the Light deck, our opponents opened two copies of Super Polymerization, a card that wreaks havoc against established monster combo boards. Let's see what we can set up to insulate ourselves. We're going to begin with Melody pitching Nessie. That's going to get a Mothman to hand before we Melody again, pitching a Roar, then banishing it with our own copy of Magnemut. We'll go Roar 1, Magnemut 2. Though Magnemut's not going to pay out till end step, it's good to chain block. And then we're going to get a Dark and link it off with this Mothman for an SP Little Knight. That's going to translate into a Hawk, into a Levineer for all Dark. Let's shuffle one of those cards back. We'll go Hawk here in order to bring back this copy of Dark, and then we can make Colossus because we've activated a Thunder Monster's effect in hand. That Tributing is going to get the Diablosis on field, which we can then use to shuffle back an additional card. And what do you know? That's two eights. It's a zombie vampire time. Sarnir hits the bin, so we'll send Lubellion before going for Hieratic Dragon King of a Tomb for a Ringo Worm. From here, we can go ahead and special summon out this other Levineer before going for Lubellion, getting a rebranded, and making a Dispotter. This copy of Ringo Worm is going to get a token, and then that'll trigger the rebranded. We'll draw a card off of that. And next, we'll go for Saruya. Saruya here is going to draw us a ton of cards at which point we can use Druus Worm in order to banish this copy of SP Little Knight, then Dispotter to bring it back. Uh, finally, we're just going to go ahead and make Seals Pass. Uh, this interaction is really layered because we've got a lot that we want to bring back from the graveyard. You'll see as our opponent goes for the Super Polymerization with a Drolly Drew off the top for a Mud Dragon, it allows us to trigger the rebranded and grab back this copy of Druus Worm. Next, they're going to go for Diviner. We will destroy the Diviner, which like screws up the Hierarchica line, but it does allow them to go for Herald of the Arclight. Unfortunately, this isn't sufficient to beat the board, so we're just going to go for Hieratic Seal and our opponent's going to scoop him up. So that's how the deck performs on the play, but what does it do on the draw? Our opponent for game two is on Rescue Ace, ah, a deck that's near and dear to my own heart, but unfortunately this highlights a huge problem with the strategy. While it is adept at OTKing, it has a real problem with decks whose interaction lives in the back row. Our opponent's going first, they're going to begin with a copy of Wanted that's going to grab a Witch. Afterwards, they're going to send this bonfire for the Witch and then activate Witch for OSS. They'll fire the OSS early and I'm like, okay, I don't really see why. Ah, I see, okay. Rescue Ace Hydrant here is going to grab an Airlifter, then they're going to normal summon the Airlifter, activate the effect in order to grab from deck to hand an Emergency. They're going to go for the wanted here, and they draw a cross out. That's pretty good. Into emergency, getting this turbulence. They'll activate turbulence's effect. That's four big ones in the back row. Then afterwards, they're going to flip up the alert and grab themselves another turbulence. Down comes Anima into turbulence, banish two, into a copy of Promethean Princess. Princess bring back turbulence into Hita. Bonfire to grab a copy of Nemesis Flag. Wait a minute. I thought I was the, the Colossus deck. Oh, no. All right. They're going to grab a Nemesis Corridor into a Selene, Queen of the Master Magicians. Uh, Selene is going to bring back nothing because we still still have the Magnemite at our disposal, which means we won't have to contend with a card like Apollosa, but we are going to have to contend with, unfortunately, Colossus. Corridor triggers here. Let's go ahead and fire off Dragon Dark while we still can, and there's the boy. They'll set two and pass back to us. We draw Forbidden Droplet, which does contest this copy of Colossus, but unfortunately, as they fire Rescue in the draw step, will not contest the back row. We're going to go for this copy of Solar, and then we'll Forbidden Droplet to negate the board while we resolve the Solar. Next, we'll go Nessie. We draw a card here. Uh, we'll go Mothman, and afterwards, we'll pitch this Dark. We activate Nessie again, and unfortunately, even though we have drawn a lot, we do need monsters in our hand in order to pitch for Melody. Our opponent's just going to extinguish our board, and we're going to have to scoop it up. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's on... What else? Fire King Snake Eye. They've drawn no non-engine, so uh, let's get it going. We're going to begin with a copy of Battery Man Solar. We're going to send a card to the graveyard, then activate Lubellion to get a Magnemut, and Magnemut to banish the card we binned off Solar here, a copy of Roar. We'll trigger Roar as one, and Magnemut as two to summon a Dark from deck. We have the other Dark in hand, but we can remedy that situation by triggering Solar and going into Skull Dread. We're going to go Roar one, Skull Dread two, and God have I missed this. Imseti for King Sark, and afterwards we'll activate King Sark and trigger the effect of the Serenir, banishing the Magnemut in order to summon it 
it from our hand. Afterwards, we will tag it out for a Lubellion, activate the Lubellion on field for rebranded, and activate said. We'll said, pay a thousand, cycle back this Magnemot, and then summon the said. Afterwards, we will go ahead and activate the effect of the regain in order to draw an additional card. It's the Dragon Dark, but I'm not too beat up about it. We're going to go Photon Lord here before committing to our King Sark line. Uh, we're going to go for Levianir to shuffle a card back from our opponent's hand to make it less likely they have interaction before we commit to the Zombie Vampire. We go Zombie Vampire here, and this is a really weird one. We hit two Poplar in our opponent's graveyard. This is maybe a little greedy, but I go for this copy of Photon Lord here because I kind of just want those stranded in the grave. Uh, we're going to go for Hawk here. This just goes for Thunder Dragon Colossus, and of course that tribute triggers the effect of our Darkest Diabolus as well. Afterwards, we can activate Diabolus, sending this copy of Zombie Vampire in order to take another card out of our opponent's hand, then Safer for Levy, Special the Levy, and end on a Hope Harb. This is just unbelievable. Two Bestials in hand as well. We'll pass back to our opponent. Ooh, that would have gone hard into my greedy Photon Lord play, but thankfully they didn't have it. So it's time for game two and whoa, chaos space. I almost forgot that we had that. We've drawn one piece of non-engine here in the Cosmic Cyclone, but our opponent has a bunch of stuff they can use to beat back our board. They're gonna begin with a copy of Diabell Star into an OSS. They'll activate OSS in order to grab a copy of Ash. Ash here is gonna grab a Poplar, and then of course they'll summon the Poplar and activate the effect, grabbing the field spell. From here, they're just gonna go ahead and do what you would expect, set the field spell. Uh, they're gonna actually set this copy of Flamberge from their hand, it must be the only one, Fire King things. They'll go into the Oak line and then activate Oak in order to special summon back the ash afterwards activating the oak sending this copy of flamberge to the graveyard for another ash which triggers the flamberge and brings back oak poplar afterwards they will make a selene activate the effect and unfortunately it looks like we are going to have to contend with a link four this time down comes the apollosa they will go for the wanted to draw a card it's another veiler three veilers in this grip uh they're going to go uh mascarena into promethean princess into flamberge set this copy of mascarena into amblo whale what is this master duel all right let's see if we can beat back this board well the cosmic cyclone is going to do a lot we'll go ahead and banish this copy of mascarena then activate melody pitching Nessie. We'll trigger the effect of the Nessie in order to grab from deck to hand a copy of Mothman. Next up is Chaos Space pitching Mothman. Afterwards, we will go for King Sark. King Sark here is a fantastic way to get over the Apolloso. We'll go to the battle phase and do just that. Then in main phase two, we'll activate Bissia Lubellion in order to grab a Magnemut. Magnemut here is going to banish the Mothman, and then afterwards we can activate the Magnemut's effect and go for Lubellion and Darkest Diabolus. Lubellion is going to set nothing because it's going to eat a Veiler, uh, but the Darkest Diabolus can tribute itself in order to take the last card from hand. We'll go Dark. They'll go Promethean Princess, which is not fantastic here because we can trigger the dark dark's gonna grab us a thunder dragon roar and suddenly we have access to the thunder dragon half of our deck we'll pitch for the pharaonic sarcophagus and then go into the chaos stuff into striker dragon into white dragon wyver burster into chaos space into of course hieratic seal into wyver burster into black dragon collapse serpent next we're gonna go for the effect of levy near and the effect of roar in sequence we'll eat the remainder of the board go into dark they'll trigger amblo whale we'll go for happy here and then trigger the dark effect as well to grab a copy of hawk uh we're gonna grab a bunch of cards to hand then activate hawk in order to summon the Dragon Roar into Colossus, into Melody, grab a said. Did you think we were finished? Not yet. We're going to go for this Zombie Vampire followed up with the Druusworm. We'll go Zombie Vampire to Mill 4, and then afterwards we'll bring back the Sarnir and go into an Apollosa of our own. Finally, we will send a Lubellion and resolve the effect of the Magnum up passing back to our opponent. Pretty decent main phase two, if I do say so myself. So we're back with the deck and impressive stuff, but clearly not invincible. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One god. Colossus is so good now. What was a small advantage engine you could use to put bodies on field off of Bestials now becomes a huge part of the end board. Not only do you get a free body from Banishing Dragon Roar from the graveyard, once you link it off and search your hawk, you can just make the mistake. There's some micro synergies here with Diabolus too. Uh, Colossus' summoning condition tributes a dark, so it always triggers Diabolus. It's just beautiful. Two, the deck has a ton of options to hand loop your opponent. If it's Diabolus, uh, Levianir, or the classic Omega Dispater line, your opponent can usually expect to be starting their turn with one or two cards less than they should have off the bat. Combine that with being unable to search, and your opponent can be completely stunned out of the game. And three, it's got OTK potential everywhere. The deck is just full of huge monsters. The Bistials, the level eights, 2,500 attack on all of these bad boys. Sometimes you can just slam some Horuses and a Levianir down and steal the game. And the cons. One, Droll and Lockbird. This deck spends most of its time searching and setting up, so an early Droll is pretty much guaranteed to make your end board and hand a misery. Two is Apollosa. The deck is almost exclusively monster effects, uh, so a chunky Apollosa can shut down three to four cards in your hand if you're without an accessible body to beat over it that doesn't need to activate an effect to be summoned. If that happens, it's just game over. And three, it can be a little bricky. Sometimes you're just going to draw a hand of bestials in your awakening targets and be unable to play. 
Overall, it seems that Colossus's four-year slumber was not enough, and he's back to wreak havoc on the format. Expect to see a ton of experimentation with Bestial Thundra, Pure Thundra, or even in whatever deck someone's brave enough to splash a Nemesis engine into. Nice bonfire, jackass. So that's that. Thanks so much for watching. These videos are sponsored by, and in many cases suggested by, my Patreons. Thanks to these people, without whom I would not be able to keep the lights on. I'll just go ahead and shout out some of the individuals who have pledged at a high level here. Elena Tincher, Alex Perea, Allison Elliott, Ally, Brett Henry, Canner, Seaweed, Darkmaster Zork, Derpin Dragon, Devin Senpai, DJ Elefante, Enraged Peacock, Gravity, John Piet, Juan Cruz Avila Zati, Night Mary, Legal Rights, Lockstone, Luis Hernandez, Matthew M. DeRezzo, MBT Play Madolce, Mike Carlotti, N54 Lionheart, Rose Lapine, Solar Flare the Ricka Queen, Troy says Buy Erasure is gay, Vincent Storm, Who's Nick, Wonder Waffle, Your Pot of Greed Does What, and Yuki. I really could not have done this without you.